All right, guys, how you doing? It's Rabir. Hope you're all well. So I've been really excited to show you this product. It's been a little while since I've had it, but I haven't had a chance to sit down and get, you know, get used to the pedal itself, and so that I could show you in depth. So I'm really excited to show you the Strymon Dig, which is a dual digital delay. It's basically it's aimed at the guys that were into the kind of 80s delay sounds and it's got two vintage voice delays and then one more contemporary for everyone that you know likes to mix it up a bit. Um, it's, it's packed full of features so I'll be going through it nice and nice and slow for you all. Um, it's got one input, two outputs so you can run it stereo however for this demo it's going to be mono but the guys at Strymon have been able to sum everything to the left output so that if you, you are running it in mono you do get the benefits of the stereo effects in mono if that makes sense. Um, it runs on the adapter that comes with the pedal or you can use your pedal power whichever you prefer but it's a cool little delay pedal. So uh, let's get into it. Let me show you the on the close-up cam that you should be able to see now close-up of the pedal itself. Um, I'll go through all the uh, features of the pedal and then we'll get into the sounds. As you can see it's got the, the sort of bypass switch and then you've got your tap tempo um, and then you've got all these different controls which I'll go through. On the left, on the right hand side, we've got mix and then mix two. Now that's obviously control the mix for the first delay and then mix for the second delay. And then we've got the repeats, which is the amount of feedback you'll hear for both delays. However, this one definitely dies out quicker than this mix because what I get onto in a minute is that you can affect the sort of subdivisions of this mix and sometimes they take longer to die out. Then we've got timing. Now that's the speed of the repeats of the delay. That does affect both uh, the both the delays. Um, they're synced together in terms of timing, so that you don't get sort of some accidental, you know, horrible crossover of time that just sounds really weird and unusable. Uh, and then bottom left, we've got time two. Now that is subdivisions pre-programmed um, for this delay here, and what they are are. You can see there are little symbols there, so we've got triplets, we've got eighth notes, and we've got sort of swirl, which is like, I suppose, randomised um, sort of repeats, and or should I say, random timings of the second delay. Then we've got dotted eighth notes, and then dotted quarter notes. Now they're really, basically this pedal allows you to do some crazy rhythmical delays, so it's super useful. And you can see here we've got two toggle switches, one on the left is modulation, so all the way up is off. In the middle is light modulation and then at the bottom is deep so that gives you a little bit of a whirring kind of modulation sound on your repeats which is good for the ambient kind of delays you'd expect to hear and then on the right we can control the type of delay now this pedal as i said it's got three different types of delay two are voiced for sort of more vintage delays that you'd expect to hear in the early 80s and then there's a more contemporary one so We'll go through each one and I'll just show you briefly what they sound like before we move on with the demo. So starting from the top, we've got 2496, which is basically a high-res converter, or should I say it's, it's 96 kilohertz at 24 bits, which essentially means you're going to get a really accurate representation of the input signal. Um, there's a little bit of a sort of di dynamic subtleties there which basically allow the delays to sit underneath what you're playing so they don't sort of fight with the dry signal and create a really sort of mushy, you know, delay sound. Um, they sit really nicely underneath the main input signal. So I'll give a really quick demo of what 2496 sounds like. So there you go, there is 2496. Now if I go down to the middle, that's ADM, which stands for Adaptive Delta Modulation. Uh, so basically Delta Modulation is a conversion technique uh, developed basically by uh, telecom communication industry people. Uh, it was developed for sort of telephones, the voice, it's a one bit conversion technique. 
Um, so what that basically means is that you're going to get uh, a very uh, small bitty attack at the front end of each delay that you'll hear. So this is a very sort of 80s sounding delay. It's really, really cool. Um, it's just good for more sort of percussive delays and that kind of thing. So this is ADM delay. So you might not be able to hear it just there, but if I start playing chords, there's a bit more of a sort of, I don't want to say chorusy sound, but definitely more kind of um, ambient or or a sound like I don't know how to describe it. You'll just have to hear it. So it's subtle, but it's definitely there. It's kind of a slight attack, synthy style attack. Very, very mild. So the third type of delay is 12-bit. Now, essentially, what that is, is it's, uh, it recreates one of the very first sort of delay sounds you'd have expected to hear back in the early 80s. Basically, delays were limited by their sort of conversion systems, which basically means like analog to digital, digital to analog. Those conversions were... Uh, very limited back in the day, but as technology has progressed, so has the ability to produce delay pedals. <laughs> so one thing that Strand have been able to do, because of the technology we've got access to nowadays, is recreate perfectly a 12-bit delay. Now, what that essentially means is that there are sort of, how do I say, pre-emphasis and de-emphasis EQ uh, and, and a bit of compression on that, because 12-bit relies heavily on the dry signal. Um, being loud enough going in that it will give you an, a, a, like a delay coming out that was actually usable and good. Um, so, as I say, what Strymon have done is recreated this 12-bit sound uh, really, really well. Um, in a nutshell, it's sort of like pre and post EQ and pre and post compression on the repeats. So what that gives you is a really warm, musical-sounding delay. So this is 12-bit. It's a little bit warmer, it's not as articulate, but it's definitely warmer. So there you go, those are the three different types of delay on the Strymon Dig. Now, they're all so useful when we get into further parts of the pedal, and I'll, t I'll show you why later on. So next, what I want to show you is the Time 2, uh, basically how that affects Mix 2. So at the minute, I've got Mix 2 rolled all the way off, so that I can talk to you basically about what this does. So Time 2, as I said before, is pre-programmed subdivisions for the second delay. So at the minute it's set to triplet. So if I dial in a little bit of this, you should be able to hear on the back end of one note. You hear that? That's a little bit of a triplet sort of delay time. So if I, if I bring that up a little bit. Kind of weird, kind of cool. Like it's very. It does remind me of that eighties kind of. I don't know, like in old in old films where they have really odd but cool sort of effects. It's definitely got that about it. So so now if we move to uh, eighth notes, 
so time so the first mix is going to be basically a quarter note so if i play this on its own so what we should have is like that so let me dial it in there you go So the reason I switched it back to 2496 is to give you a much clearer representation of what that delay is doing because 12 bit being old school it means it deteriorates in quality. It's kind of like a more analog kind of sound delay but um, 2496 is going to give you the, the clearest uh, indication of the rhythms that are going on. So Now let's move it on to the swirly setting which is kind of more random. There's probably a, an accurate name for this, but I kind of like swirly setting, it works for me. So I'm actually going to just quickly show you what this sounds like. So it does sound like it's catching up with itself. Now this is going to be great for more ambient stuff, so I'm going to switch this back to 12-bit. I'm going to put some modulation on and then I'm going to dial in a sound and see if we can create some more ambient reverberant style delays here. I think I've already found my favourite setting because for me that's kind of, it's like halfway house between delay and reverb. I mean, it is more reverb than it is delay, but the fact you can get that on a delay pedal is immense. So for me, that's definitely a, a, an awesome sounding delay or sound on this pedal. Um, so there you go. Now let's put it back to 2496, take the modulation off and move on. So now we're going on to dotted eighth notes. Now this should be a funky sound because we should be able to hear a, like a an eighth note with a little bit of a triple accent, like da 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 kind of thing. So here we go. So that's pretty intense, it's a very cool sound. Now we're going to get onto dotted quarter notes. Now this should be, I think this should be longer than the first time uh, in terms of repeat because it's a, it's a longer note, but let's have a listen. You 
can hear how it's longer there on the repeat than the than the first one so So those are all the different subdivisions that you can get with the dig. Um, they're all pretty crazy and to be honest when you've got them in stereo that's when you'll hear just how crazy they can be. Um, but what's really cool about the pedal is it's got a lot of flexibility um, and it's very easy to use. As I say I'm just spinning this knob here and it's just changing the timings without, really, without me really having to do anything which is really nice. Um, so it's, it's fairly straightforward in terms of how to use it. Um, but there are secondary functions on this pedal. Now, they're all really, really, it's just like extra stuff that just really works for the pedal and it works in your favour. To access any of the secondary functions on either Mix 1 or Mix 2, you have to be holding down both foot switches and then spinning the dial which way you want it to go. So, essentially, Mix 2 controls the type of uh, delay repeats algorithm, as it were. So, in the middle, it's kind of like, ping pong here and then on the left it's series and on the right it's parallel so for instance parallel would mean that if I hold down both switches and then go to parallel on a stereo rig mix one would be controlled on the left hand side and mix two would be controlled on the right hand side so to speak um, which is proper cool because it means you can you can control the volumes of each delay depending on the kind of thing you want it just creates more flexibility in terms of the, of the pattern because we're running this pedal in mono, the secondary function for mix 2 um, is basically it's creating an identical sound to series. So unfortunately because I haven't got the stereo rig, you're not going to hear sort of left, right, left, right. If you do want to hear that, then go and check out Robin Lee's uh, demo for we set it up as a stereo rig and we recorded it stereo so you can hear the ping pong delay working that way. But for this, it's basically going to be representing uh, a series configuration. Uh, in terms of the sort of the delay sounds that you'll hear, both left and right are going to the same output. If I was to hold down both foot switches and then control mix one, that would act as a filter, either a high pass or a low pass. In the middle, there's a dead zone where it's going to be flat, but if you move it all the way over to the left, it acts as a low pass filter, which essentially cuts all the high end, which is amazing for those ambient kind of swells that you want, especially using the swirl setting with the repeats up quite high and um, the 12 bit setting, that's going to be sick. And then on the right hand side it's a low pass, so essentially, sorry, on the right hand side it's a high pass, which means it takes all the low end out and it gives you like a um, sort of a midi, high mid kind of repeat sound. So what you need to do is you need to press down both of these switches here and then hold this all the way, swing that all the way to the left. So hopefully now you should be able to hear how there's a lot less high end in the repeats. So... For me, that is, I, I prefer kind of a duller sounding repeat because it's great for doing the ambient stuff. But let me show you how it works if we swing it over to the right hand side. So now it sh the repeats should have a lot less low end and basically be, be more have more high end. Push push up the repeats a bit. So now I'm going to try this with the low pass on, and then I'm going to go 12 bit. I'm going to put some delay on, have the swirl in the middle, put the repeats pretty high, and let's see what kind of ambience we can get from the from the dig.
Oh, that's awesome. That is such a cool sound. Again, like I say, it's uh, it can do the reverb thing really well, and it can do, obviously it does delays primarily, but it can do a reverby kind of sound, which is just awesome. Um, I'm going to try with the high pass now. So there you go guys, there's the Strymon Dig, I think it's an awesome pedal, it's definitely very flexible and they've really paid a lot of attention to what you would expect to find from those original kind of 80s sort of digital reverb sounds. Um, they never fail to amaze me uh, with the intense of like engineering and expertise that goes into all their products and that's why I use them and I'm proud to use the Strymon gear. If you want to pick one of these up, they're the same sort of price as all the other sort of stomp boxes in the range, it's around 250 quid. Um, and obviously, you know, they're not the cheapest pedals in the world, but to be fair, you're not really likely to change from getting one. Um, like the Strymon Flint is one of my favourite reverb pedals. I use the, the timeline, the Big Sky and the Mobius on my board using a gig rig to control it all. And I just... I can't get away from how good the sound quality is. So if you're looking for high-end, top quality, really well-built sound quality, then you need to be looking at Strymon because they're definitely the probably the biggest contender for the top quality digital effects. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll put links in the description. Um, and then please let me know what you think. Anyway, nice one, dudes. I'll see you soon.